So now how do we go about a change in potential energy then in A-level physics, especially in this topic of gravitation? You need to remember that G is now no longer constant. We're dealing with differences in height where G is no longer uh, remaining a constant value. So we can't just expect to use PE is equal to MGH as an equation and keep on assuming that anywhere between any height G will, be remain, will, will stay the same. So let's say we've got an example where a satellite orbiting at this particular orbit, and let me name this orbit orbit 2, is now moved to orbit in a second orbit closer to Earth, which I'm labeling as orbit 1. So to find the potential energy that it loses when going from orbit 2 to orbit 1, we must use this equation still. But this is going to give us the potential energy that there is at the orbit 2, at this particular height. Okay, and let this particular height away from the center of it this time round be labeled as h2. We also need to assume that this g, this acceleration due to gravity, the gravitation field strength that the satellite experiences at this distance away from it is going to be different than the gravitational field strength experienced in this particular orbit which is closer to it. So we also have to say that this is g2. The mass of the satellite, if this is the same satellite, will be the same in both orbits. So let me just leave mass as m. The equation for Orbit 1 would be there for PE1. This will be the gravitational potential energy stored in it at that particular orbit. That's obviously the mass of satellite and I decided to leave that as M. However, G I'm going to label as 1 because this will be different than what is experienced up top. And H will also be labeled as H1. So the difference in potential energy between the two orbits will now be given as such. So the change in potential energy is going to be equal to the potential energy at the second orbit minus the potential energy at the first orbit. The potential energy at the first orbit is going to be less than the potential energy at the second orbit. Why? Because there is less height. Okay? So equations mg2h2 minus m g1 h1 and that is therefore going to give us the change in potential energy however we do know that the gravitation field strength meaning g that small g is given by such an equation we did this in previous parts of the topic g is equal to universal gravitational constant the mass of earth divided by the distance away from the center of earth squared so in this particular case, I can substitute G2 for all of this with the height away from the surface of Earth, in the case of G2 being that H2. So all of that becomes universal gravitation constant times mass of Earth divided by the height away from the center of Earth squared. And obviously that is multiplied to h2 so that is the first part of our equation for the second part of our, our equation I'm going to do exactly the same thing but instead of g1 substitute with g mass of earth divided by this time round h1 squared because this time the distance away from the surface of earth is h1 and again multiply that to h1 now we can simplify this equation by doing away with this h2 and one of the h2s that there are in the denominator because that's squared and the same thing with h1 and what we'll end up with is mg mass of earth all over h2 minus mg mass of earth all over h1 and that is how we can find the difference in potential energy between these two points so